Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is Seek Sustainable Japan podcast. Thanks for joining. This is episode 444 of the podcast. So I thought I would talk about one of the、mm, hardest issues, I think, for me.、Um, four in、uh, Japanese often has a bad connotation. I remember when I had my 44th birthday. And I called it the double death party, and we had chocolate and、uh, lots of deep fried food <laughs> and、uh, lots of things which are bad for you,、uh, kind of in an ironic twist to turning 44. And this 444th episode,、um, I gotta talk about ocean plastics because it's been kind of at the core of why. I get out on a monthly basis and、uh, try to clean those beaches. And、uh, doing a campaign now on、uh, change.org、uh, to try to get people to sign up. So if you're interested, please sign for that. I'll put the link in the show notes.、Uh, we have 2,903 people who have added their name to the petition to stop the use of plastic in Hiroshima's oyster industry. Now, I timed the petition to coincide with the G7 as the world was looking at Hiroshima, as all the top economy world leaders came to Hiroshima、uh, to talk about peace and environmental issues, were a part of it. And、uh, it was also a chance, Hiroshima was actually closed down. <laughs> you couldn't go around during the G7. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity. To go and join、um, my friend's organization, Fukuoka for Sustainability, in the South Island of Fukuoka, and join their big beach cleanup、uh, that they regularly do. And so, this video, I'll have some of the audio、uh, from the interviews I did with the organizers and the activists who were there cleaning the beach, the volunteers on the beach、uh, in May. And we saw it's really useful for me. Uh, to see that、uh, absolutely what they're picking up on those beaches in Fukuoka is the same that we're finding on the Hiroshima beaches, and more than 90% derives from the fishing industry. And according to CNN,、uh, 22% of plastic waste is mismanaged around the world and it ends up at, as litter and then in the oceans. But according to Uh, safety for sea, the ocean cleanup,、uh, 75% to 86% of all the plastic debris in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is from the fishing industry. And there was a report from the Ocean Cleanup Organization, a nonprofit run out of Amsterdam, which now has interceptors, these machines out in the oceans and on rivers around the world, trying to collect. The plastic waste at the very end stage. Of course, we should reduce what we're using and buying, but I'm so grateful to organizations like this that are cleaning up at this end stage before it becomes microplastics. And what they found is that a majority, 34%, is coming from Japan. And it was really shocking to me to see that Japan is the largest contributor. So, I really felt like this was the year to try to do a campaign and do some soft positive pressure on the government、uh, to make the change, at least make a strategy and a target to start phasing out the plastic that they're putting into the water every day for the oyster industry, which is the largest contributor,、uh, not only for this Hiroshima area, but for it gets into the Great Pacific garbage patch. I see them picking out. The plastic tubes that we get on the beaches here, and I've seen them put in with the oyster industry. I see them pick it up in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch by the ocean cleanup、uh, when they have their videos. I've seen it on the beaches in Hawaii. So we know it's a global problem, and they don't have any clear targets of when to phase it out. So we want to add some positive pressure there. According to the researchers who studied the plastic debris they were picking up in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch,、uh, 
Uh, the countries accounting for the largest amount of garbage are Japan, 34%, China, 32%, followed by Korea, 10%, and the U.S., 7%, Taiwan, 6%, and Canada, 5%. The researchers referred to the Korean Peninsula, lumping together South and North Korea into a single category. So this came from a Korean newspaper. And I haven't seen any Japanese newspaper covering this latest data from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and the ocean cleanup. And I think this is a core part of the problem. There is a real lack of awareness of the problem with plastic pollution from what we buy, what ends up in our waterways, and what is actually put on purpose into the waterways by the fishing industry and the oyster industry in Japan. There's very little awareness. And I think the, one of the big problems is it's not in the media. People are not talking about it on NHK. People are not focused on it in documentaries and wide shows. There really needs to be more awareness. And as an international resident, I know a lot of Japanese people who are also doing beach cleanup. So I just wanted to add my voice. Now the information from the ocean cleanup goes on to say that one third of the large plastic items collected from the Pacific Ocean are unidentifiable. Uh, most of them are broken down into small pieces that it's hard to identify what they were used for or where they came from. Um, but two thirds are dominated by objects typically used in fishing, such as floats, buoys, crates, buckets, baskets, containers, drums, jerry cans, fish boxes, and eel traps. Among the waste items whose use could be identified, the most common type was the oyster farm equipment. So for me, that's validation uh, to be trying to do this campaign and try to have a dialogue uh, with people in leadership positions to really start phasing out this oyster pollution with plastic and go back to the strategies they used to use traditionally in Japan using bamboo instead of plastic and uh, we're seeing this in operations in uh, Miyagi in Tohoku prefecture uh, in Maine in America we're seeing that people are using reusable baskets instead of the plastic in between which would also reduce the labor costs uh, it takes a lot of labor to use this plastic piping in between the oysters to hang them below the floating oyster decks. Um, so it would reduce costs as well. Uh, there's a lot of wins if we just think about a better strategy. Now as a parent, I think it's more personal issue as well. I remember being on the beaches in Hiroshima when my daughter was two and she was collecting these uh, plastic tubes which are used in the oyster industry and uh, we were talking about where they came from and she saw a fishing boat go by and she holds them up to the fishing boat and she says, hey, you forgot these, come and get them. You're not supposed to leave them here, this is litter. And I just thought that was, it was so powerful. And then years later, looking at the beaches, looking at the kids swimming in between uh, all of this floating plastic. And the problem is just getting worse, not better. Um, so it's definitely something we need to talk about and think about how we can change our consumer habits. That's really one of the only things we can do. So since doing the beach cleanups, I have forbade myself and encouraged my family uh, not to use pet bottles. Uh, not to buy pet drink bottles especially, but uh, if possible, now my show you comes in a glass bottle or a refillable bottle. Uh, all of my products, if whenever possible, and it's very hard to do, it's very hard to find, but whenever possible, uh, just avoid plastic. And it is really hard in Japan. Uh, especially in Hiroshima, we have very few places you can refill or uh, reuse your own containers. Um, so anyway, I know it's hard. I'm there with you, struggling. But if you make some personal targets uh, for yourself, 
your baseline, like I will never buy plastic if there's another option, those kind of things, even if you have to pay a little bit more. Uh, what I found is that when you have that rule that you don't buy plastic, you actually end up with higher quality products, maybe costs a little bit more, but I have had a new love of a lot of these products that I've switched to. Um, so anyway, give it a, consider it, give it a thought. Uh, it's always something that, that I thought was impossible uh, when I made that target for myself, but something that I've been really happy. Uh, I've mostly been able to do. And when I can't, you're like, oh, well, that's not possible yet. Keep searching uh, for possibilities. Um, but one of the things I wanted to make this podcast and I wanted to add these amazing short interviews I did on the beaches uh, when I joined the Fukuoka First Sustainability Group um, because it's so wonderful to hear from other people and why they have joined the cleanup and what they're thinking about it and the kinds of things that they're picking up. Uh, so if you have a chance in the area where you live, around Japan or anywhere around the world uh, to join a cleanup or just even go by yourself. Sometimes the cleanup doesn't coincide when, when you have free time. Uh, I always take a bag to the beaches and fill it up. So if I go and have a day at the beach, I bring home a bag of trash or leave it at the garbage uh, area near the restrooms. And I saw that uh, happening in California when I visited California beaches in 2019, they had reusable bags near the water fountain, another thing we need in Japan, uh, to refill your water bottles before you head to the beach and grab one of these reusable bags. You can fill up with waste around where you end up spending the day on the beach and just do that kind of grassroots community action, which I think has a good feel about it and uh, you feel better after your day at the beach, but also it does help. Uh, whatever you take out of the ocean and off the beaches, it does help. Every little bit counts. Every little bit helps. And I'd love to hear from you if you know of any other cleanup uh, events happening in Japan or around the world, or you are uh, trying to reduce your plastic use, uh, please reach out by social media. You can find all my links on Linktree. I'll put the link in the show notes below. Hi everyone, welcome. We are at a Fukuoka community cleanup event down here, visiting from Hiroshima and lots of good people here helping to pick up some of the plastic pollution off the beach that we find. There's always more to pick up, always lots to do, but it's nice to do it together, have this great cleanup event they're sharing, sharing the burden, people bringing their families out. It was great to meet up again with Tyler, who's a dad who used to live in Hiroshima and joined me on cleanups there, and now is living in Fukuoka and joins the beach cleanups in that area. What kind of stuff are you finding? I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh I my gosh. I found a bunch of this stuff. It's like some kind of insulation or something. I, I think, know. oh yeah. I mean, most of what we're finding and then the is market. nets, yeah. right? From the fishing industry. The fishing nets, yeah. But that does look like insulation yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Some kind of cotton or fabric. Yeah. How, how does it feel as a dad to do this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice because we always love going to the beach and we love going to the mountains. And it's just, you know, a small, tiny thing we can do to make sure the next generation can enjoy it too. Yeah. That's right. It's, good. it's, it's for them, right? Yeah. For the kids. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there was another group out here. Uh, you can see them over 
on the, the main beach area and they had probably about 50 people out there uh, cleaning up for two hours before our group got here and it's just wonderful to have this collaborative work and so many uh, local people who are now very engaged uh, with this uh, plastic pollution, ocean plastics problem. It seems like there's more awareness when you see uh, local groups out doing the cleanups as well. It's uh, really wonderful. Next, I had the chance to talk with Todi and her husband, Izumi, who were both at the cleanup and live in Fukuoka. Todi is originally from Odessa in the Ukraine, and she does her uh, videos in Ukrainian, but they have English subtitles. She now has 1.22 million subscribers. Amazing. And she talks about life in Japan and has such a great positive attitude uh, and very cheerful and fun to talk to. It was a pleasure meeting her. <laughs> There's a fugu here. That's crazy. <laughs> kind of scary. Yeah, and you you brought a lot of people here today. No, actually, only no? two, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and, next time. And you you have your YouTube channel. Okay? Yeah, I do. Can you tell us the it's name? It's Tori Chan channel. It's mo about life in Japan, I guess. Awesome. Have you yeah. been always in Hiro in Fukuoka? No, actually, we moved from uh, Tokyo like uh, one year ago, almost. Awesome. Yeah, well, I love it. What do you think of Fukuoka compared to Tokyo? You it's, like it better? It's actually really nice. You know, the ocean is so close and nice to, you know, chill. But it's like really small compared to Tokyo, of course. Not so many foreigners here. Maybe it's good. <laughs> and why did you want to get involved for the beach cleanup? Well, we're actually friends with Rachel and June. So they told us before that they are making this event. Awesome. So mm. it's nice to do it all together. Isn't yeah, it? it's really nice. You know, so many people who care about the environment. Next, had the chance to talk with Rachel from Rachel and June. Uh, they're very well-known and popular YouTubers on their Rachel and June YouTube channel. They have 2.58 million subscribers and they did a great video which has 2.8 million views three years ago about cleaning a Japanese beach and they focused on the beach that we are back at uh, doing this cleanup for this event and they have brought a lot of awareness uh, from their introduction of the issue on the YouTube channel so really appreciate all of the work that they are doing and just the positive energy uh, that they bring to these projects is amazing so it's wonderful to meet her clean up uh, it was like Hey Rachel! Hi! <laughs> Can I talk to you just for a sec? Yes! Yeah. So how long have you guys been doing the community cleanups? Since oh, I, last year? I am so bad with time. Uh, definitely since before COVID because we like cut down when all of that started. So how, I, how long has that been? Three years? -ish? Three years, yeah. Ish? And, yeah. and how, why did you think like let's try to do a community event? What, what spur do you want? Um, so I met a friend here in Fukuoka and we both talked about how we wanted to do some sort of like volunteer work. We liked uh, like picking up trash and stuff. And then she happened to find Melissa talking about how she was organizing a beach cleanup. So we all just joined forces. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's so much better together, right? Yes, absolutely. Because the problem's overwhelming. Yeah, it is. Um, and like surprisingly, we've met most of our friends in Fukuoka through these sorts of events you get to meet like all kinds of really cool people who are like super active and, you know there's most people who volunteer their weekends to pick up trash are probably gonna be pretty cool people right so yeah <laughs> awesome thank you so much yeah. what kind of stuff are you picking up everything that i can uh get into my hands like a lot of the plastic is way too small to pick up which is always sad but you just try to do what you can yeah I knew, I knew I would find some. This is from Hiroshima. This is the oyster tube. This? Yes. 
So that is what they use to separate the oysters and they put them in the water by the tens of thousands on the hanging oyster beds mm -hmm. and they space the oyster, spacer, oyster all the way down the long strands. Mm -hmm. And I knew I would find some here because I found them as far as Hawaii. Oh, they find them oh in gosh. the great Pacific garbage patch. So whenever you find that, uh -huh. think of Hiroshima and hope that they go back to bamboo and wood yeah. instead of plastic, right? Today I learned, uh, and there's never like too little bamboo. Yeah. It, grows, <laughs> it grows so fast, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a resource we have a lot of in Japan, right? Yes. Yeah. So we're finding these big clumps, which were probably floating in the water on this. And a lot of it is organic. So these are like old uh, pieces of wood and leaves and things that wash in, which is organic, which is not a problem because it'll go back to nature. But it's intermixed with hard plastics. As I'm talking and walking by the debris on the beach, I walk by these plastic tubes, which have like a cone shape, black plastic, and that's what uh, we saw on the ocean cleanup picture of the one of the most common types that they're picking up, and this is from the eel industry. Now, in Hiroshima on sacred Miyajima Island, the most popular local foods to eat are grilled eel, unagi, and or anago, and uh, oysters, and they are both the top two plastic. Uh, producers of ocean plastics um, pollution, which is so shocking because the UNESCO World Heritage Status Island of Miyajima and Itsukushima Shrine, everything is focused on the Shinto love of nature and uh, this honoring of the gods of the island and everything in the narrative. And then you have even on those beaches in front of the famous shrine, you have oyster tubes and uh, they're promoting oysters and eel on the island. So it's just this huge contradiction between love of nature and what's actually happening in the environment right there. So it's it could be great branding to completely start phasing out this plastic and rebrand in a more sustainable way, uh, promoting the sustainable local oyster industry. So it really could benefit uh, people, planet, and profits in many ways. Styrofoam and things that are, are going to break down into microplastics. They're not going to break down and go back to nature in a, in a good way. Uh, these little tubes are also from the oyster industry. Uh, so please go on change.org. I'll put a link below. I have a campaign now uh, to encourage Hiroshima and Japan's government to stop using plastic in the oyster industry because Hiroshima's oyster industry is the biggest in Japan. And we find them on all of the beaches and we're finding them here in Fukuoka and we found them in Hawaii. So we know they're a big problem all over, not just in our area. Look at these cute doggies. Hello, Charlie. Can I interview the dogs? Oh, of course you can, yeah. <laughs> Hello. I'll get, I'll, get my energy, I'll get my energy from them. Yeah. We're, we're out there, and I'm like a 90 year old, you know? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be crawling across the beach. <laughs> are, you, are you based in Fukuoka? Yeah, in Dezaifu. Oh, okay, Dezaifu, I was there yesterday. It's oh, was beautiful. It? It's a nice, peaceful place. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, it's, uh, we run a school out there called Learning Zone. Okay. And I've uh, been out there for about 14 years. And uh, yes, never looked back really. Nice. You and know? why did you want to join today's event? Um, well, to be honest, I, I used to be a kayaker here in, 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 in Kyushu. I've recently just sold it because I've got a three-year-old son. And my wife's a bit worried about me going out. And I'm in my 50s now. But when I used to go out kayaking, so much plastic in, in the ocean. So much plastic. And, and to be, I have to be absolutely honest with you, the times I thought, oh, I've got to take a bag with me when I go out there, and I never did. And I came across so many bottles and, and, and rubbish, 
Uh, but with a sea kayak, and here comes the excuses, it's quite narrow. Uh, it's quite very long, very narrow. It's it, it wouldn't last on top of the boat. Wow. So yeah. when this when this opportunity came up, I just grabbed it. I thought, well, now now it's time to you know give a bit back, you know. Yeah. And um, where, where are you from originally? Uh, England. Yeah, whereabouts? Um, I was born in Birmingham, but I was raised in Devon, oh, in nice. the southwest. Well, Devon is on the coast, right? Yeah, right on the coast. Yeah. yeah. So we do very similar things to this because um, plastic is presenting such a problem, you know, for, for our marine life and 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 obviously the environment. Yeah. So it's it's a vital, you know, uh, it's a it's a crucial problem. Yeah. It really is, you know. And the, the pollution. What, what kind of stuff are you picking up? Do you, can you source it? Yeah, I mean, I'm picking up just like um, plastics, ropes, and in this pot is, is uh, cans and stuff. Okay. And uh, and I've got my eye set on that area there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always more. There's always I mean, more. You could, you could bring a pickup truck here, can you? A great big yes. articulated yes. truck, and you'd still need another one, I think. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. It's just like, it's a bit demoralizing when you see how much there is. You know, it's definitely need more people, I think, but you know, awesome. but it's, it's a start. Well, great work. Thank, Thank you work. so much. We'll continue down, talk to these people cleaning up in the shade as we're walking along, what kinds of things we see. Most of it is embedded in these patches, floating patches they were, but uh, getting them off the beach is great before it washes back out to the ocean, to the sea. There's a good pile here. Now these floaties, these are better than the, the breakable styrofoam part because they last longer in the water and break up less into microplastics. So they're a little bit better, but I think we'll still try to get them out of the water if we can. How are you guys doing? <laughs> What kind of stuff are you picking up? Can I interview you? Okay. <laughs> so you came all the way from Canada for this, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Some family and a little bonus cleanup. <laughs> so there's actually, I mean, volunteering as part of sightseeing in Japan, what do you think? Is it something you'd do again? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot there. Uh, what kind of stuff are you picking up? Lots of rope. Um, and bottle caps and just other bottles and containers and let's interview Allison. Allison's one of the organizers of FFS, FFS which uh, I love that you told me the name and you said because it sounds like for F's sake as well as Fukuoka for sustainability, right? We started with the ac we started with the acronym and then we found something to fit the letters afterwards. <laughs> And you, you guys got together. Uh, Rachel told us a little bit yep. about how you got together and decided to do this community cleanup together. Yes. And how does it feel as one of the organizers to get out here? Uh, it's just so great when all these people come with the same purpose and the same energy. They want to protect the oceans. They want to keep as much garbage away from the fish and the animals that live there as possible. And uh, it's hard. I've done it by myself a number of times as well. And you need the other people for the motivation. So we've been at beaches and done cleanups and we've had surfers join us. We had a couple saying, oh, what are you doing? Oh, give us a bag. And they helped us for 20 minutes. And it's that's the part that's really rewarding, right? Yeah. And what are you holding in your hand? I found a fork. A fork. Yeah. So even bringing your own cutlery somewhere might be a good idea, right? What yes. can we do is what I always think. Yes, yes. And if it's a fork, we throw it away. But if it's something like a silverware from home, then we're going to keep it, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Buy nice things and use them often. But I have to say, there used to be a parking lot way down at that end of the beach where people okay. would come with jet skis and they'd drive along the beach. And we used to find a lot more bento boxes and lunches. Oh, okay. And I've found cooler boxes. I've found beach toys that people come and just use for the day. Probably bought at 7-Eleven on the way here, like people who don't plan ahead or, you know? So at least the parking lot's now blocked off. So we do see a definite difference in garbage. But the way 
this island is, we get the tides bringing in, like, it's the worst beach it's in all of Fukuoka. Which, in a way, is a good thing. Yeah. Because it's it's able to be collected. Yes. Right? Yeah. And we met a great group out doing it today. Yes. Right? Lots of people. And the city is giving them, the us as well, the city provides the bags and... They'll come and pick it up, so you just have to tell them who you are and how many people you expect and give them a bit of a report afterwards. So, That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. they'll pick up all the garbage, which is one of yes. the hurdles people worry yep. about. Yes. It's getting it picked up, right? So that's actually a tip. If you live in Japan, go to your local city office or ward office and to the environment department and say you want to do a beach cleanup, and they'll give you free bags. And you can also put up to five bags out with your regular garbage if it's in the beach garbage bag. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you. For thank you me. so much. Yes. So, last, would you like to be interviewed? <laughs> All the way from Calgary, Canada, as well. Indeed. So, how do you feel? Oh, quite nice. How's your it's, experience? It's been so far so good. It's nice being under the shade, cleaning up the beach yeah. here. At least it's quite hotter out than we originally expected, but we're making it work one way or another. Yeah, yeah, awesome. What kind of stuff are you picking up? Lots of rope, lots of plastic. I found a jacket at one point that I was a little scared I was going to get a bit more than I bargained for, but thankfully it was just the jacket. <laughs> oh, good, good. Not a body in a jacket, right? Yeah, you guys are doing great work. Awesome. The latest, uh, oh no. To beach oh no, COVID specific. Yeah, awful. Is that the grossest thing you found so far? It's not there yet. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Sometimes you find diapers, mm. sometimes you find condoms. So it is good to have these tongs. That's a good tip yeah. as well, right? Yeah, awesome. Well, good work. Look at how beautiful it is. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. it's beautiful, but when you look close, you're like, ah! What is that doing there? So you can see along the beach here, you can see all the uh, buoys. Uh, most of what we're finding is from the fishing industry. Uh, probably most of it is from Japan's fishing industry. So we really want uh, to clean up our fishing industry, our oyster industry. That's the majority of what we're finding. But we are also finding, you'll see here, pet bottles. Even recyclables, even aluminum, even glass, things that can be recycled. We do have recycling bins. Uh, it shouldn't be here. So there is uh, some work that uh, individual consumers and families and people who buy things, which is all of us, can do, uh, make better choices as consumers. And there's wonderful things that we can do when we elect people and talk to people who are in leadership and government positions about how they can make strategies to phase out plastics, for example, in the eel and oyster industry, which according to the Ocean in uh, Cleanup, who is picking up from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, is the biggest problem. And Japan uh, comes in at 34% as the biggest contributor of ocean plastic that they find there in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So we know that Japan is a very clean, nature-loving, conscientious country, but we have improvements that could definitely be made. So let's start doing that. Why the package with a million yen in it is fine. <laughs> All right, let's go to talk to Melissa, who's one of the other organizers. She's up under the tent. That's one great thing. Uh, that would be awesome to see in beachside coastal developments in Japan is to plant more trees along the edge of the beaches so we have the potential for shade and get some water dispensers out here so people can stay hydrated. There's no water fountains or anywhere for people to fill up with water. So uh, Rachel and June very generously donated some drinks that the volunteers can have. And it's great having organizers who are doing that. So this is Melissa, one of the event organizers. I came to Fukuoka three years ago now. Um, and before coming, I lived in Tokyo. And in Tokyo, me and my husband were doing like uh, SDGs type um, project 
uh, for an online magazine called Sequel. Um, and there we were just talking about um, companies that are related to sustainability in Japan. Um, and we did it bilingual. Um, so both English and Japanese speakers could um, listen to the information that we talked about. But once we moved here, we wanted to continue that, but also actually do action. Um, so because Fukuoka is really close to the beach, we thought, why not start beach cleanups here? Um, and then we met other friends like uh, Rachel and uh, Allison and other people here um, who were also really pumped to start something like this. So um, yeah, we started three years ago, Fukuoka for Sustainability. And uh, yeah, it's been great. We've had students, parents of kids, um, both Japanese and English speakers coming. And it's great because we can all mingle and talk and get to know each other. And we've met a lot of great friends through that as well. So it's really awesome. That's awesome. It's much easier together as a group, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's like fun, you know, just like talking, meeting people as you're cleaning. Yeah fun day at the beach and exactly. we had other groups that were cleaning today yeah nice to see, yeah right? we were really surprised um sometimes we see do see people clean up by themselves but this is the first time we've seen a big group so it's great that you know more people are engaging in beach cleanups and do you always clean in the same location is it a um, place to meet yeah this is one of our main locations because we have connections with the local island uh like city stuff um so they really help us with um having us use the the citizens hall over there for our lunch meetups afterwards um so it's just easier here but we have cleaned in other areas in the east side um, of the city as well. Nice. Yeah. And uh, how can people find you on social media if they want to get involved? Yeah, we have a Facebook group, Fukuoka for Sustainability. If you search it through there, we also have an Instagram, um, also Fukuoka for Sustainability. Um, and yeah, so I think we only have the Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, so if you'd like to come on down to Fukuoka, we have some people that just visited here and wanted to participate, so it's really awesome. So, yeah. thank, thank you, so you. Much. thank you for coming, Joy. Yeah, of course, it's awesome, awesome to be here. Such great positive energy, everybody doing good. It's awesome. Thank you so much for organizing. Yeah, thanks, Sign off for today. Thanks for joining, everybody. And uh, you know, it seems overwhelming for sure, um, but there are things that we can do to help a little bit. Big thanks to Fukuoka for sustainability for organizing this wonderful event, cleaning up the beaches in Fukuoka. Keep up the great work. Thanks everyone for joining. And I'll sign off. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a great day. Take care and uh, see you next time. Bye for now.